John, are we all set? Yeah. We'll wait for Kelly. Yes? Mm -hmm. First, I apologize for starting late, um, but we will make up for it on the back end. And um, quick hello to everyone in TV land. I'm sure um, Joe Norton wishes he was sitting here. Maybe, maybe not, but he is uh, back at home tonight, and I'm sure he's watching. Hello, Joe, and uh, welcome back. Um, can we uh, get to item number two, accepting to the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, and we will move to item number three, meet the applicants. Um, actually, um, under uh, agenda two, walk-ins. Oh, that's right. I didn't see it there. Yep. Walk-ins. Do we have any walk-ins? Okay. Then we will go to number three, meet the applicants. And we'll start with the first uh, person is Scott Thomas. Saw you over there, Scott. How are you? Good. Come on up. We've all seen your application and really just get a second to put a name with a face and, yep. and uh, ask a few quick questions and get your feedback. Um, you're uh, applying for the Renewable Energy Committee. So you've got solid background, obviously, in that field. Well, so I do every day, right? That's what you do. <laughs> um, so any questions from either of you? No, uh, I do not. No? Sean, any? Great. Colin? Scott, very active in the community. Obviously, you, you do this sort of stuff. We appreciate you applying. Great, thank and you. And that committee's done great stuff for the town, you know, with the um, solar array and the, and the wind turbines. So, uh, you know, it's a real important committee to the green uh, impact of the town. So. Thank you for applying, and uh, I guess on item number at the end, 12. we will uh, 12. We'll be appointing the position, so All right. you can catch Thank us you. on TV. <laughs> Thanks Thank for coming, in, Scott. Thank you. Uh, next is Maureen Carlberg. Hi, Maureen. How are you? Hi, Maureen. Thank you for coming in. You are applying for the Affordable, Affordable Housing Trust. Great, and, and we saw you up before for uh, other things, and I know Rick got in touch with, touch with you, so thank you for uh, continuing to be involved in the town. Um, John, you know a little bit about No, I mean, I, I, we met before, Ms. Carlberg, when you were applying for uh, conservation. I think you'd be a wonderful addition to the uh, Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, as you know, the trust is uh, funded through Community Preservation Act. Uh, each year, 10% uh, of that fund goes towards the Affordable Housing Trust, or at least for affordable housing, of which the trust has been the beneficiary of that. And, um, you know, right now the, the trustees, I'm one of them, could certainly use your assistance and help. And uh, a lot of things are happening. It's a great time to be on the committee, and, or the trust, rather, and uh, look forward to you participating. Okay. Thank you for coming out for probably the third time. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, appreciate but, the effort, you know. Great. Sorry, Appreciate the desire to serve for the town, like Tony said. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's great. You'll be a good, you know, addition to the committee. And um, another one of the real important things in town um, that have huge upside with the, the green commitment and the affordable housing commitment. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. We'll vote on it on agenda item 12. So. And Elizabeth Cranston. Hi, Elizabeth. And you have applied for the Citric Cultural Council? Yes. Thank you. I read you're new in town and want to get involved, and, yes. and certainly a, uh, a good choice, as well as the CPC. I saw you put that second on your list. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, anything, want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, we read it, but you can, and what prompted you to be interested in this? Uh -huh. uh, well, I just moved here from California, um, and I'm really interested in just learning as much as I can about Situate and figuring out how I can plug into the town and so when I saw that there were openings on the committees I did some research to just see where maybe I could contribute the best so my background is in nonprofit fundraising and I do professionally I do grant writing and grant making so I thought it was a good match for the cultural council since that's the function of it <laughs> and um, I have a passion for the arts so I thought it would be a, a good way for me to be able to contribute while also learning a lot from the town great so I hope you all consider me those are all the right things. <laughs> any any questions or uh, thank you? No. I, I I have to say this is one of the committees that I think has um, or councils as it, 
more appropriately put, um, that has so much upside. You know, there are a number of them, whether it's beautification, this uh, ha affordable housing trust, um, community preservation committee. Uh, it's just an opportunity to make the town and accentuate the town and make it better. And uh, so I'm very, very pleased that you applied for, to it, and I hope um, you can further it along, if you will, uh, in certain directions that it hasn't gone. So I commend you for, for, for applying. Thanks, and again, number 12 will make the appointments, and Great. we're on channel 10. Great. Outdoor, uh, item number four, outdoor entertainment permits. Um, the first one is at 19 Ava's Lane. Hi, Tori Murray, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, so, um, my husband and I are planning to have uh, an outdoor party on the night of August 6th, Saturday, Six, so we're here to apply for a permit um, to get your permission to have a live band. We've checked with our, we've invited all of our neighbors, and uh, either they're coming or they're out of town. So no one has stated any objection, and we've certainly asked them, please let us know if anyone does object to having live music in the neighborhood. And our house um, backs, the back of our house is where the actual event is going to take place. is is facing wetlands, so. There's certainly no disruption behind us, and in front of us is, is just our local neighborhood, and we've invited everyone to come and join us. Great, that's a sure way not to have objections. Yeah. Um, great, and it's just a regular party? Yeah, it's just this uh, summer. Uh, uh, fling? Yeah, exactly. Good. Family, friends. Any uh, questions, John? The, the only thing that popped out on me, and I'm certainly not going to vote against them. Yeah, you know, I'll vote for it. But I did see that it's going to be kind of like rock and roll to 11 o'clock at night. The only reason I say it's amplified, so while I know I assumed you're on the back end of the uh, Sam Tilden farm, That's right. um, is that maybe the other neighborhoods, it may, being kind project. of wetlands, may project or crop carry. So just be cautious of, you yeah. might want to, I mean, if it's an annual event, you might want to be careful. But you know, I only say that because it is outdoors. But certainly, you know, every, you're, in, you're entitled to it in my mind. Thank you. But, yeah, and obviously, if someone complains, then you're here to, to whatever. But I think uh, it's a Saturday night, right? Saturday night, yes. Right. All right. Motion? Sure. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the outdoor entertainment permit for 19 Navis Lane for Saturday, August 6, 2011, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Have fun. Have fun. Thank you. Do you think we can turn that off? Is, do you have the controller there? Thank you. The next one is um, on 169 Edward Foster Road. Um, Brianne and Justin. Uh, okay. Hello. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Hi. If you can just state your name and your address, I should have done it. Brianna Fatigue, 87 Green Street, Marblehead, Massachusetts. Great. And you are looking for? An entertainment permit for an outdoor wedding reception for Saturday, August 13th. Uh, we have a jazz trio playing from 4 to 7 and a DJ from 7 to 10. Um, all of the abutters have been notified and invited. Um, and again, those who are in town are coming. So we've um, not had any objections from any of the neighbors. Any questions? Nope. So the event is a, is it a wedding? It's a wedding reception. Wedding yeah. reception. And you, I just noticed in your address, you live in Marblehead? This is at my parents' address here in Situate. Great. In the back there? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and it's amplified from 4 to 10, a wedding reception on Edward Foster Road. I think that is great. Can I just ask yeah. one question? And I'm all in favor of that's great. Parking, can you get the, is, will it be enough parking? Yes, we were able to secure parking. Great, yeah, that be, could be a challenge, but no, have fun, that's great. Great, motion. Will the board second vote to grant the outdoor entertainment permit for 169 Wood Foster Road for Saturday, August 13th, 2011, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 10 p.m.? Second. Second by Mr. Danny, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. great. Good luck, Thank you so much. congratulations. Thank you. Moving on to item number five, which is a discussion vote of an interfund advance borrowing. The town treasurer, Ms. Laparta, how are you? I'm good and good. Good evening. Good, thank you. 
Um, I've been here many times uh, for these types of things. This one is a total of $1,126,000 for the different capital items um, that should be on the list that you all got on your, in your packet. Um, the <coughs> biggest chunk of it is on the um, Musquashkit Pond project, $775,000. I just want to, you to know that most likely we won't spend that much. It's just I'm in the process of getting an interim loan from the MWPAT, um, which is typically very, very cheap. So um, I've submitted the questionnaire today to them. So it's just in case they need the money based on their cash flow submitted to me, and we have to expend the money before that goes through. So this is basically we're borrowing money from ourselves to fund the capital projects that we passed at the town meeting. And it allows us to start the projects quicker and um, complete them quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we can read through them real quick. It's the meter replacements, the carbon filter replacement, both in the water enterprise fund, um, SCADA upgrade, not sure what that acronym is, but again in water transfer, a Bobcat, which we have a, I assume that's what this lovely picture is of. Um, for DPW, um, foreshore protection, road improvements, and the largest one is the Musquasha Pond Sewer. And some of them, it's just a portion of the total authorization on the projects. It's based on the cash flow needs um, from the DPW. Motion? Sure. Sorry, here we go. I'm going to move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve advanced interfund borrowing by the Treasurer Collector. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Jane. Um, and you are here for number six as well. I am. Number six is uh, vacating a foreclosure decree. Right. Um, as you know, part of my job is on the treasurer's side of my hat is to foreclose on those who don't pay their property taxes. And also as a tax title custodian, I, I have a role after they've been foreclosed on as well. Um, I have three properties from the same owner that um, hadn't paid any taxes in several years, and my tax title attorney foreclosed on them this spring. Um, I was approached by the attorney for the former owner because we are outright the owner now of these three properties. Um, and I was approached by uh, the woman's owner, um, and there was an interest to paid the money owed to the town, everything that we've expended, all the taxes, any other fees incurred, um, to the tune of almost $200,000. Um, I spoke at length to my tax title attorney. I spoke to the woman's attorney, obviously. Um, only somebody with a legal interest in a property can redeem it anyway, never mind to ask the foreclosure decree be vacated in land court. Um, so I did get that proof as I had requested. Um, so my recommendation to you from my tax title attorney is to allow this to go through and to, um, what it would mean is my tax title attorney, Jim Coppola of Coppola and Coppola, going back to the land court and telling them that we want to vacate the decree of foreclosure and allow the people to buy back the three properties, or the woman, actually. Okay. Um. Again, normal course of business. You don't pay your taxes. After a certain period of time, the property becomes foreclosed on and becomes a property of the town. Right. And then the town typically auctions it off, right? Um, but in this case, their attorneys have come back and um, have wanted to purchase those properties. And it's our attorney's opinion that, w that they would win in land court, so there's no sen sense in fighting it. Exactly. And they pay all their taxes, all the fees, all the interest, all the everything that's associated with the debt. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Just a quick question. Sure. Um, the fact that they are in arrears and they're willing to pay up to date, can we put a condition? Because the right to redeem, I think, is like a year. This is a question I'd ask Coppola. And that's mm -hmm. saying that during that time period that they will not, um, I, obviously they fell back behind for taxes, that they better not fall behind. Once they pay it, then they don't pay their taxes again. We're going to exactly. be right back in the same same boat having to then go through the whole process. That's what I'm trying to avoid, at least for 
purposes of the further duration of the right to redeem. So I don't know if that's a, a condition they can put it's in it or not. Absolutely, and I discussed that with him because that was my concern, and Trisha and I had spoken about it as well because they hadn't paid taxes in six years. Um, they were in tax title for all three properties back to the spring of 2006 for non-payment of 2005 taxes. So what he advised me to do is, as part of this payoff amount for all three properties, to not only include all the back taxes and all the interest through a deadline date, which I think I recommended in the motion to be August 15th, I believe, um, but the FY12 quarters one and two taxes for okay. all three right. properties. That's fair. So, so yeah, that's two quarters point. in. Right, in that's uh, all we've built yep. to date, so we can't build them yet for the actual taxes, but yeah. No, that's fair. Right. Sean, anything? Nope. Motion? Move that the situate Board of Selectmen authorize the vacation of the foreclosure decrees granted by land court for the properties located at 33 Collier Road, uh, parentheses MBL number 64-6-8, end of parentheses Collier Road, parentheses uh, MBL number 64-6-9, end of parentheses, and 28 Otis Place, uh, uh, again parentheses MBL number 50-4-24, end of parentheses, upon the receipt of full payment. Owed to the town of Situate as calculated by the treasurer collector. The payoff must, strike that, the payoff amount should include the FY or fiscal year 12 first and second quarter taxes on all three properties as well as all delinquent taxes, interest fees, etc. and should be paid no later than Friday, August 12th, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Jane, thank you. Good work. Item number seven is the purchase of a new CAT or CAT 289 CTL, parentheses, Bob Cat. Kevin? Good evening. Um, in the last town meeting, $90,000 was appropriate to purchase a Bob Cat for use in highway, public rounds, and snow removal. DPW has reviewed and requested that the board approve this purchase of a CAT 289 CL track loader with the attachments for 86892. Um, I've included some pictures up there just to show you what the machine looks like. It's a pretty versatile machine. It's a track machine. We'll be able to use it to uh, set the tide gates on the beach, get out on the beach. Um, it's got a bunch of different attachments. One of them is to um, grind the roads and do repairs to the roadways. And uh, it, it's also for a trailer to haul around there and bring to different parts of town. Right. Um, again, appropriated at town meeting in the amount of ninety thousand dollars. The appropriation is, or the price, is uh, eighty-six thousand eight hundred ninety-two. Um, just yeah, sure. one quick question, Kevin. It just you just made me think of it now. Can we get a York rake for that to pick up a small amount of seaweed on beaches where it's sand? I know it's not going to travel over rock very well. But. Um, I'd have to look at the picture if it's set up for for an attachment on the back. I know the counterweights on the back. Well, no, it'd be on the front. It's going to... Oh, the York Rake on the front? Yeah, yeah, then I then we... It has... The capability like, of doing that. Yeah, it has right. a lot of attachments, right. so it's it's a possibility. Um, and one of the things that we are getting on that machine is a... It's a grapple. Grapple rake? Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's yeah. the grapple rake, then? Um, and it's kind of like a rake. It could be used... It could be used for if there was, say, driftwood or something on the beach, you could come in and pick it up, and the sand all falls underneath, so you're not picking up all the sand. It's not like it's similar to a York rake, but not really. It couldn't be used as a York rake. But there is a possibility we could look into something like that for the future. That's a great idea. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, where it has tracks. Not anything? Motion? Nope. Yep, motion, please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to award the purchase of a new CAT 289 CTL? Compact track loader, which is a Bobcat to Milton Cat of Milford, Mass, of the total price, including delivery of $86,892. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Moving on to number eight, which is a uh, discussion vote rescind Hawker Petter's license for Egypt Country Store. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Perfect. <coughs> if you can just state your name and address. Name and address. 
Um, Robert Newson, I guess the Egypt Country Store is the Egypt Country Store, uh, 67 Marshall Captain Rob Pierce. Marshall Robert Dell, 75 Captain Pierce. Right. So we're here um, because inadvertently um, we passed a Hawker's Petters license in a location that we shouldn't have. And the uh, um, zoning enforcement officer has told us that there needs to be a variance in order for there to be a Hawker's Petters license at that location. So. We are um, correcting a mistake that we made earlier in, when did we do this? I don't see a date. Uh, June, June 21st maybe? 7th. June 7th. I June think. 7th. And um, unfortunately what you'll have to do now is you have to go before the ZBA and get the variance t taken care of so that you can get a Hawker's Petters license there Which again. really negates why we came to begin with because now we're going to have to pay another $35 plus a filing fee. It's just easier just to do it the way we've been doing it. Um, if yeah, it's I, I was just curious. It's kind of an odd situation, I guess, but it's funny that the store can't have a Hawker Pedals license in front of its. He could go somewhere else and do it, but in front of. Yeah. Could well, someone else come in front of my. <laughs> no, no one could come. In, that area is a residential okay, zone I area. See. And John, you probably know it better than me, but so you can't. You have to get a. What, what's the kind of variance they call it? Uh, it's a variance. Unusual, no way. Oh, not not necessarily, the problem is is that you're, you're actually a non-conforming non use. Right, right, okay? right. So because you don't conform to the zone, because you're in the residential zone, but it pre-existed the residential zone being created because the right. store was there for years. The problem you run into is that being it's a non-conformity, it's an expansion of that non-conformity, right. which puts you in potentially, not necessarily a variance situation, could, depending on the setbacks or things, but it could put you in a, a situation where it's a, an intensification of the existing non-conforming use, or maybe it's not. The, the, the reason, and, and that's when I saw Neil's letter, Neil Duggan, that's the zoning enforcement officer, what he's saying is, is that, and you hit the, the nail on the head, Mr. Newsom, that's true. Um, if you put that hawker's peddler's license or, or, or your um, trailer in front of your store, in essence, you are actually morphing out the store, even though it may not be attached well, to it or not. We didn't want to put it there. We didn't. We didn't have a location in town. Right. right. And, and I realize, and I think that's what so we were we, trying I think to. We all put our heads together and came up with that inadvertently. <laughs> we thought, well, we're helping you out, trying to see if we exactly. could make it better. What exactly. we failed to do was kind of look at it from a, uh, a zoning perspective, and that's that's the problem we run into. If this were the business district, no problem, not a problem at all. But because it's in the residential district, it is a problem because now there is a, a pre-existing use of store selling things, uh, and then by adding that on, you're extending it. That's that's what's going on. So, Neil's saying you can't. In order to do that, you have to go to the zoning. Nobody in zoning is saying that that's a no, but obviously it could be a, res a possibility too. Uh, so from our perspective, we can't give you the hard competitor's license to sell there. Okay, um, and I think that's kind of way that we're looking to rescind, pull back, if you will, the Hawker's Peddler's license to sell in front of your store. We want to be in compliance. Our, our, our intention is not to have right. a problem. Yeah. It's certainly, it wasn't your fault, it's our fault. Okay. You know, we, right. we shouldn't, like, like John just said, we didn't look at it from that perspective. Well, I don't think and, any of yeah. us did at that point. We were just, because we, we originally had wanted to go to the ball field, right. and um, then there were other hawker peddlers that had already been issued licenses for Cole Parkway, for this, for that. And it really didn't matter to us, right. as I explained. It was an economical thing for us. Instead of paying $35 for each event, we could pay a $70 fee for a one-time inspection. Right. And now it's just going to cost us more. So it, it's a little irony here. Yeah. Um, I think what our master plan is, and I know that the, the town administrator and Kim Donovan are working on trying to, I mean, the Hawker Pedalist license has really grown mm -hmm. and morphed into this big well, thing in the town. Well, I think it's going to be a, a real issue because of food truck nation. Right. Well, we're, we are going to, you know, try and get ahead of the curve. Right. And, right. you know, we've, well, we've issued know all the licenses Kim that, and, Kim one second, and, we've issued all the licenses that we're going to this year. Right. And, you know, by the time we roll around to next year, we're going to have our ducks in order. We're going to be organized and we're going to know what we're going to allow and where we're going to allow them is our plan. Right, right Trish? Well, she's, <laughs> the, Kim and Trish are doing a great job with their research and, you know, 
kudos to them. And, and I think the other thing that certainly, you know, from my perspective, and um, I can't speak for the rest of the board members, but I think, you know, um, when we implement the new, I say plan, schedule for next year with Hawker Peddlers, uh, my preference is obviously to people who live in town, people who have businesses in town, this to is try to help. Year. So, I, and it's one of those things where I said this like four years ago when some somebody's trying to sell hot dogs out of Hanover. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta give preference. Of course, I don't think that was the only one. But anyway, my point is, is that you know, when when people come up, it's going to be put out there. You'll know about it, and um, so you know, people should line up, come in, and we'll discuss it. You know. No, I think it's a great thing. I think, uh, but I that's the only reason right why we're looking at it. Right now, it's a little, it's a little, ups, it's a little upside down right yeah. now for the people that work in Situate, live in Situate, have businesses here. Right. It's we're, not we're, in our favor. We're trying to, to here. <laughs> we're trying to focus on it, not not to. I think what yeah. what the intent initially was that people were looking to try to make some money, and we of course said sure, why not? Right. And it's mushroomed. And and, and 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 so we looked at both of those things, and now it's gotten to the point where a lot of it's people not, got involved. It's not just situated; it's every shore community. In the in the peak sales months, of course, are May through October. Right. And that's the people that are here year round, kind of get right a smack in the face at that point. So. I think this year has proven that it's maybe boomeranged and hurt the businesses. These. Hawker peddler licenses, so we need to look at that because okay. I, that's the one thing that we don't want to do. But that's neither here nor there for purposes of the reason why we we're saying we had to pull it back was because we gave it an error. Okay, and as so long as it's nothing that we did. No, no, no. That that that's the only reason. Because our, our intention you is can, to be in full compliance. Yeah, you can obviously. We're not saying no. Go forward with the zoning, file an application to see if you can expand that non-conforming use. To do it, and you're you're free to it's do only, it. It's, but it's only um, till October right. at so this point. So, so that's the only reason why. John, my question is: If we rescind this, is this going to have any effect on what you might or might not do at Heritage Days? I know you guys have a, you know. No, we can still do Heritage Good. Days. All right, that's Good. not a problem. We can Good. go any place but in front of the store, okay. in town. That's what. <laughs> no, I know that, but by if we rescind this. Yeah, is that we're sending a Hawker Peddlers, not the mobile. Or, I, th I mean, and, and I don't want to do something that's going to hurt you. That that's, yeah. that's I, like, I don't think we want to rescind says this. That it, they're able we to do it for um, outside the store and for special events. And what we're oh, all right, is okay, the just all store. right, yeah. all right, good. So the special events so is not going to be impacted by it. Good. Yeah, yeah I didn't. Do think we have so. the. Uh, good. Yeah. I like that letter that we got yesterday too. That was very nice. So I, I special yeah. events, right? John's right. It says, yeah. So why don't I'll make a you motion. make a motion so that? you can? I'll say that the board of selectmen are moved to grant a hawker peddler's license or to maintain. Let's put it to this way: that the board of selectmen will only rescind that portion of the hawker peddler's license issued on June seventh, two thousand eleven, with respect to Excuse the. Me. Um, um, applicants cannot uh, sell in front of their store located at 67 Cap Captain Pierce Road. Second. Thank you. Okay. Did you catch that? Okay. And that, Trisha, it's fine to do it that way just to take out that piece of it? Yeah. Right. Uh, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One question. So yes. that means that we can go and have the inspection for a Hawker Peddlers. We just can't use it in front of the store. Yeah, right. So, so we do, do have a Hawker Peddlers. For special events. For special events. Right. That's J just for special events. Thank you. And Sorry. again, reiterate, you did nothing to cause this. It was it was our error, and um, we'll look into that in the future when we do it. Give out these licenses. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I do have one other question. I don't know if this is the venue for it, but how can I get it um, for the future? A, a defined use of that property, but because it's been in the past, has been controversial. Where we can put trees, Christmas trees, or, or, or tables out front. And this is all stuff that's been going on since the '30s, as far as I know. So, what what is the? But where do I find it? What is the actual rule here? Is everything is supposed to be confined inside the store? Is we decide to sell, I don't know, model rockets out in the side yard? I can understand that, but we have there's been uses that this store has been doing for the last hundred years. And uh, so how do I get a d definition of what we are? Expansion what, you know? of non-conforming. I, I don't fully understand the expansion thing. How I, it seems uh, to be open to it. Sure, sure. sure. No, I, I would I would probably say you have to contact probably an attorney 
number yeah. one, okay. because the attorney would have to do the research to determine over the course of years what has been sold or what's been identified in the town for what the purposes of that location has been. Right. And then from there, um, you know, obviously it's, it's a store, convenience store, for a number of years, and what does typically convenience me. Now, if you end up saying, guess what, I'm going to start selling oriental rugs off the store, well, that's not a convenience and probably doesn't fall into it. It's a sale of an item, but it probably doesn't fit into the parameters of it. If right, you say, right. I'm going so to start it, selling. It could be dictated what happens inside the store also. I mean, it's, I, we seem to see it as a general store, as a, you know, since it's been that. It's but if it gets to something beyond the pale, I mean, and right, if it's right. in a gray area, well, that's when you get into trying to, shall we say, get interpretations but if it's the black and white different things you know like i'm going to sell cinder blocks well no you can't right, I mean, right, right. on the other hand if you're saying yeah i'm selling sandwiches or i'm selling you know uh, um you know but john i think they're asking also about the extent of the property line to sell not necessarily in the store but outside of the store is that a zoning issue like that would on be the a sidewalk? zoning issue and so yeah you, again not necessarily on the sidewalk but if if the building, and that's what you're dealing with, you're dealing with the envelope of the building, okay? And what's, you say Christmas trees, okay, so that may be an extension, but if you end up saying, okay, I'm putting now, not only putting Christmas trees on a seasonal, now I'm gonna be putting, I start using that space, it's, it's kind of like a creep. You know, like a classic example would be you have a restaurant, and then all of a sudden you say, I'm gonna put some tables outside. Then right. the tables turn into an awning, and then the awning says, gee, we wanna to continue to expand it, we're gonna close that off for three seasons. Then you get into the fourth area, which is, I wanna just cover it all up. Now the building's expanded. Right, right. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a sense of what is creep, if you will, how things right, are moving right. along. Right, right, pre-existing thing. Uh, so if you're selling little things, you know, trees or plants or something, but if all of a sudden it begins to morph into a whole plant stand, a, a, a plant farm, you know, it may or may not fit within the confines. Right. Right. That's where I say you have to the consult the lawyer. The store has done that for years. If that were the case, then, you know, then you'd have the argument of saying, well, the store's been doing that. Yeah. So it's not creep. Okay, well, that's that, that's stop here before you so have to just, build it's, them. It's such a <laughs> kind of gray, so we really, you know, I guess that's the issue. Is right. we just so need zoning to is going to deal with the, the proximity, and your attorney will talk with the contract. Okay. Great, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. On to number nine, which is a vote discussion on the Ellis House license agreement. Hi. Good evening, Janet. Um, Janet, Janet are you? Oh, hi. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and just your address. Um, I'm at 30 Pheasant Hill. Great. And I'm here with the um, license agreement, which um, we worked on with John and Trisha <laughs> and our attorney, um, Dan McKinnon. And the only question I have, as Trisha and I have been back and forth, is what happened with the maintenance repair on item D? Did we add in the bit about snow removal and clarify that? Other than that. Item D? In what number? Uh, three, maintenance, repair, and cleaning, page three, item D. So well, we had a, Trish and I had a couple of emails back and forth, and I CC'd it to you this afternoon, John. I don't know if you saw it. Because um, we had a Hold on one second, Janet. Let sure. me just say, let me just, uh, so people understand. This is um, a license agreement. This is with the Situate Art Association, <laughs> and I'm not sure the exact, I think it was 1994. 1995 at town meeting it was determined by the town uh, to shall we say sell or in essence I don't want to say donate but uh, uh, give provide to the Citroen Art Association the Ellis property and the Ellis property is off of Country Way so if you go up Country Way it's it's um, off on the left hand side um, unfortunately uh, during that time period it was never conveyed and so the Citroen Art Association has been up there for the past almost 20 years and consequently um, you know Tricia came in and it was determined that you know they didn't have ownership the town still owned it so we needed to make sure that we dotted our I's and crossed our T's and made sure that there was some formal agreement between the town and the Situate Art Association which necessitated a discussion about a, uh, a li license if you will um, to uh, for the Situate Art Association to um, continue to shall we say uh, occupy the property so since then, we've kind of looked at different things, and of course, if you go up there, the Art Association's done wonderful things. We're trying to re restore the building and make it look nicer on their own dime, not the town's. Uh, there are trails up there. There are a lot of um, uh, artists um, who paint, and you see their wares down on Front Street. But in the meantime, we put together um, both uh, the town attorney, uh, town council, as well as their attorney, uh, basically a license agreement 
for those people who don't know. It's kind of like a lease, but it's a license. It's a big difference. So this is a license between the town and the Situate Art Association for a term of one year with renewal uh, prospects uh, after the I term of the first year. Two years. To so, uh, uh, oh, Janet, hold on. Okay. Uh, there is a renewal pro uh, a provision that after, um, if there's no default, if you will, that um, there is a renewal for another two years and uh, so on. So. Um, Ms. Carnaschio is asking about maintenance, and that's one of the subparagraphs, or paragraph three, about maintenance of the access road, because the town does plow the road up to a point, and there's a parking lot, and the town under this is responsible, it's town-owned property, um, to do the plowing up to that point, um, but it's the responsibility of the association, and my understanding is to take it from that point just to plow. If there are any problems with the road repair, the town will undertake that with Who the... Who is the reverse, we agree on? We've been maintaining the road and the town had agreed that they would plow the bottom lot, which is the access for the walkers. Yep. And then they would, every time when a storm was ended, when they were doing the tertiary roads, they would plow up to the house with the, because that's town owned. And right. essentially it didn't cost them anything. You know? And that's what D said, that's what D states. That's, that's I just want to be clear that that's what we understand, that, that, that what will happen, that the, because that would, We've been able to figure out a way to maintain the road, but plowing the road requires having a snow plow. Right. Maintaining the road we've been able to do by, um, basically yep. we've been draining it. We've that's, been setting that's it up so it has subpart channels. D does have. Yeah, okay. So I think so that satisfies the needs that you're okay. looking for. Okay, all right, if, um, if we're all on the same page. So it reads, it reads the way that you just stated, so I don't have that copy. I guess okay. you guys got Well, why don't we just read I'll just read it very quickly. Maintain, uh, uh, provision D says, maintain the access road to the premises. The town of Situ will be responsible for the lower lot <coughs> in its regular sweep of the suites for snow removal and will clear the roadway to the estate as time permits in the final phases of storm cleanup. Maintenance of the access road by the association shall not include any responsibility for water run runoff from the access road to the country way or otherwise. Perfect. That was the one thing that um, we were back and forth on, and I haven't seen it, so that's what I was asking for. Great. You can have this copy if you'd like. Um, um, it's just and the original language you sent. Cool. That, that works. And the okay. term, as John said, Thank goes you. from July now till July of 2013. And our idea is to work on eventually setting up a more formal lease agreement. This is to give us the time to do that. Right. And it will, it's renewable as well, as John mentioned. Sean, any questions? Just, just a comment. I, I, you know, I think they probably deserve a little more credit than maybe what John said. I was up there the other day, and the gravel road going up to the Ellis Estate is as smooth as Hadley Road, and it's gravel. I couldn't believe it. Um, then when I get up there, the painting project you have going on is terrific. It's, it's, cool. it's, it's coming along very good, and yeah. you know, I, I don't know how we could do it ourselves. We have. You know, right. plenty of buildings now. An old wooden building like that is just, a, it's a lot Our of work. next budget item is to replace some of the clapboards in front because they're so old they can't so, be painted. Right, right. So we're going to be doing that in the sections. But and um, I'm going to be talking to the CPC. We have that updated preservation plan is ongoing, which was C funded by the CPC in the um, spring meeting. And I'm you know what we were doing. We're, we've right. got <laughs> right right. furnace number two is about to die, so we're going to try and get right. grant from the Mass Arts Council, partial funding from the CPC, and then some of our own funding and put the three together and upgrade the heating system, the second one for the apartment. Right. While we're on that note, I just mentioned to Tricia, there's only three of us. I've, you know, if you guys don't have a problem with me voting on it, I've brought oil and service up there, so I think we have to. I'll have to vote. I don't see a problem with it. So, just wanted to right. mention that. Thanks for. Any um, other questions from for no. me? Okay. Thank um, you for answering mine. Move that the board of selectmen vote to execute the license agreement between the town of Situate and the Situate Art Association Inc. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. And uh, Tricia and John, thank both of you sure. for, yes, for sure. really taking, you know, not a a potential risky situation and really tightening it up and making sure that everyone was clear with what their responsibilities yes. were. So, yes, I agree. Uh, thank you very we much. We did have a lease in between, by the way. It, it went dead somewhere in the 
early part of this this decade, but it wasn't completely <laughs> without some controls. <laughs> thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. Have a good, thank you, John. Thank you. Moving on to item number 10, which is discussion of uh, FY10 audit and management letter and FY11 through 13 management audit bid and award. Um, we've read, I don't know, Patricia or Mary, who wants to comment on this? We've been given documentation, we've been given the audit report and, and looked at them both. Um, are there any details that you'd like to go over? for FY10, so it's actually the period July 1, 2009 to June 30th, 2010. So it's not the one that just ended. So we're looking back um, 13 months now. Um, but I think it's a particularly um, helpful management letter and also one that is <coughs> a marked improvement over some of the previous management letters. Um, and uh, Mary and Jane are here and they have a lot of the credit um, to be commended for for a number of the improvements that are really noted throughout the letter. I mean, by its nature, an auditor is an objective third party that is looking for things the town is doing wrong. That's the purpose of an audit. So the fact that this is um, so strong on the town side, I think, um, is, is really helpful. I think it talks about a lot of things that we've been talking about the last few years and um, starting to make progress. and the other post-employment benefits as far as the unfunded liability that we did at this town meeting, regionalization efforts that we've been talking about. Um, we're very good with compliance with the new ethics law. Um, we've also done some improvements in uh, personnel compliance, but that is one of the deficiencies noted that we've talked about as far as not having a centralized HR function. The improvement in the procurement has been noted, um, noted as well as um, compliance with GASB re reporting requirements and the internal controls for cash receipts. Um, and again, those are directly attributable to Mary and, and Jane's efforts. So um, there's a lot in this audit, um, and um, I hope that, that you can read it um, because I'm pretty pleased with it, but we still have a lot to do. Um, it talks about the town's reserves position and how that impacts the bond rating, which we went through last year and are going to go through again next year. So it says 10% of our stabilization and 10% of our overall reserves this should be the ultimate goal. We're at 7% right now, but in my view, that's pretty darn good given what we've just come through and still may be facing. So um, I just wanted to share that with you, and we can answer any additional questions you might have. No, I, I read it, and uh, I... I agree there's much, much more positive here. It talks about all the improvements we've made. It talks about how well financially we're being run as a town and how our free cash and our numbers look, look strong, particularly given the um, current economic condition that we're all uh, dealing with. And um, it does give um, feedback for areas of employment, like you mentioned, the human resource function and some internal audit type stuff. But it's always they always seem to be based on something that we've already taken a step in that direction, and they just think we need to proceed with that. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's much, much more positive. Um, there's some stuff with the school that I'm sure you're, you're, you've spoken to them about in terms of, you know, um, some accounting and, and taking care of encumbrances and some cash transactions that can always be tightened up a little bit, but um, I'm sure every community is dealing with that sort of stuff. Um, but overall, it was a, uh, a very positive uh, document that I, I thought. And as Tricia just mentioned, this is fiscal year 2010. We just finished 2011. So a lot of these things have already been dealt with in the upcoming year that just ended. So hopefully we'll see the continuing uh, improvements in the, in the appointment letter. So um, any comments? No. no. I mean, and I think at some point in time, you know, the board can discuss whether we should actually get the accountant in here and in public forum and discuss um, their recommendations in public. 
um, as opposed to us just going over it in, in more of a, a summary format. Uh, Mary or, or Jane, any comments or any thoughts? I think you should both be very proud of, of the document that we have in front of us and um, you know, we continue to work on some of those areas. Obviously some of them, you know, the unfunded liabilities, tough to catch up on, on 50 years worth of uh, neglect in one year, but at least we're taking steps in that direction and that's well noted. Great, so do we need, is there a motion? Oh no, the no, motion no, would be in the one. second portion, right? So let me address that. Um, this is another one in the never ending contracts I have voided because they were not properly executed. So your auditing contract was actually a three year auditing contract with optional five years to renew. Um, you and they never caught it. That bylaw until uh, <laughs> fall of 2009. So therefore they just served out the three years, which is what the town was able to award. And we went out to bid in June to um, do a new term. That being said, we also increased the FY12 budget specifically for the audit. Um, and as you can see in my uh, material that I presented to you, I am recommending that we change audit terms. Um, it is not a reflection on the current auditor that we've had for the past year, few years. However, um, it's very important to not get too comfy with the auditor and have a new set of eyes come in an objective third party. The easy thing for us to do would be to continue to have the same auditor that knows us. But we want to challenge ourselves as far as our internal controls. With the uh, increased budget, we're able, as this FY10 audit noted, that because of the bid price, the scope of their ability to do test audits and internal controls in various departments limited us to one department a year, and it was in the transfer station. I get to pick it in consultation with Mary. This new audit will allow additional testing to be done. Um, Powers and Sullivan, who is the recommended auditing firm, is um, pretty well known in Massachusetts, and one of the other reasons I'm recommending them is we should always aspire to be um, better than we are. And we, all communities have benchmark communities that they compare themselves with. And Powers and Sullivan is currently serving a number of the communities that I believe we should be benchmarking with in terms of um, their management letter recommendations around organizational array of departments, internal controls, staffing needs, and things like that. Um, so it's, in, it's an increase of $9,000, I think. Um, but when that, I, I think, will be well spent and they're ready to get going because this will be the FY11 audit now that just ended June 30th. And Maria, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add to that. Uh, no, I, you know, because it's like financials that are being audited, I, I don't think I really should be picking the firm. I'm happy to have a choice. I mean, to have you know, an opinion. And Powers and Sullivan is um, the high recommendation. I've spoken at our association meeting. How, uh, a couple of quick questions. Uh, how long have we been with the current? Uh, six years. So six years, two, three year contracts. And how many did we talk to? We have received five bids. Three others. Yes. So five total, the current one, this one, and three others. And you were involved in that process as well? Yep. yep. She, let, she, I, she did the RFP, I reviewed it and approved it. She accepted the bids and then I determined who would go with that for consultation with you. Right. Jane, any, any comments from you? Uh, just two quick questions. Have any of you girls used this firm before? No. no? I've seen the conferences. Okay. Yeah, I've got the same as Bob says, and I uh, asked some other accountants in there. They uh, did the city of Springfield while I was there, but Mary asked them <laughs> when she asked them. They, they didn't know. I didn't deal with them directly, and they had okay. no idea who I was. But huh, that's good. But they were in Springfield, I think, the last year before I left. And we're. This is a three-year contract. I mean, it's not huge, but what if you, you know, really found something you didn't like after the first? We well, can opt out after the first? Um, I think at least for one year when you can extend it. For right. Okay, great. Right, and then Perfect. we can do that for another two years, so Good. as many as five, because 
we accepted that bylaw now that says you can execute up to five years. Great. So if we like them, we can keep them for five. No. Um, great. Um, and again, reiterate, and I, I'm just going to read a paragraph here, um, you know, that we commend the prior firm for the great work that they've done. There was limited in terms of the budget and what they could do, but they did a great job. And really, this is being made based on just fiduciary responsibility of, you know, getting a new set of eyes in here and, and really maybe getting a view from a different angle and getting um, feedback um, from a different group of people. But uh, they certainly did a great job. And, um, and obviously the due diligence in, in the process of selecting these people seems to be done thoroughly. So, motion. any comments? No? A motion? Sure. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for audit services to Powers and Sullivan for a contract price of $39,000 for fiscal year 11, 2011. Second. Th oh, hold on. 39000 for fiscal year 2012. And 39000 for fiscal year 2013, with an option to renew for two additional years at the town's sole option. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you guys for all the, uh, all the work on that item. Okay. Item number 11. The uh, discussion of the town meeting schedule. Um, I asked Sheila to put this on the agenda for planning purposes, and I did send you a brief email earlier today. Um, just for planning purposes, it's really good since we have such a long lead time for town meetings under the charter. Um, and even though it's August, October's not that far away. And as in terms of proper notification to various boards and committees and uh, the residents at large, I just wanted to chat with you about what we're looking at and to not necessarily have you set and vote tonight what the date for town meeting is, but what I'm recommending to you so that we can plan in that vein. And um, after speaking with the town clerk and, and also being in communication with the moderator, it looks like the week of October 24th is going to be the best week. And as I mentioned in my email, we don't have a lot of wiggle room with the special town meeting in the fall because our free cash is usually certified in September and we have to set the tax rate in November. And so you can't spend free cash till it's certified and you can't issue a tax bill till you have the tax rate and you know all your obligations. So October is really the month that makes the most sense. And we all we have Columbus Day in there and stuff. So um, I really want to, barring any for unforeseen concerns on the part of the board, to plan for that week of October 24th, um, either the 24th, 25th, 26th. You can do any day of the week now because we changed the bylaw. So I just want to know if you had any concerns about that. Well, I think it's important to note that we need to have one mm -hmm. um, and that there are topics that will be on there. We'll, we'll discuss them, obviously, as they, as they come up. Um, and also for people that wanted to get items on it, that that's the time frame that they have to, to think about, end of October. So um, articles have to be... We'll have um, Kim or Sheila send yeah. something out so folks know the deadline, and I'll establish that deadline, and it will go out on the website and the web blast, and I'm sure the news folks will report on it as well. But it will be sometime in September. Right. Okay. Sep September for an October meeting. Yes, right. Right. but we need to have the any petition articles or anything like that, and planning board, I know, is looking at two articles. so. They, they have to do their window back, too. Good. Great. Good. I don't think there's a vote needed, but thanks for the information. And it comes up, it comes up quickly. So if you don't start discussing it now, um, it's here before you know it. Great. So let's move on to item number 12, which is the appointments. Um, I'll move to appoint Scott Thomas to the Renewable Energy Committee. Second. Um, Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's I'll unanimous. Move. Um, Scott, thank you. I'll move Maureen Kahlberg to the Affordable Housing Trust. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, Maureen. I'll move Elizabeth Cranston uh, to the um, Citrate Cultural Council. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Lost an oil customer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very Th much for thank getting you. involved. Thank you. Um, I'd also move Ruth Wagner to the Seawall Committee. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And I'd move Rosemary Doby to the Grants Elevation Committee. Second as well. Second by Mr. Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Finally, I'll move Doris Creary to the Grants Elevation Committee. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you to the three of you for participating as well. Without the participants, the town's committees don't work. So we really appreciate it. Um, moving on to number 13, the uh, town administrator's report. Um, town administrator has a very brief report, but um, I did just want to publicly uh, comment on the situation at the south end of Gannett Row, uh, Minot Beach, as far as the ramp. The ramp will be closed for the rest of the summer, and we are working on options for next year, but as the board knows, um, there was a unsafe condition that developed as a result of some of the rocks moving and after sort of band-aiding a few solutions and trying a few solutions that didn't work um, in the interest of public safety we um, closed the ramp so the northern access is available uh, through the stairs um, but that that access will not not be open and was officially posted and, and closed last Friday. I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have, but I think you pretty much are aware of what's been happening there the last three weeks as we've been monitoring it on a daily basis. And so just to add, there was actually an injury there as well. There after, was an so injury there, even with the lifeguards there at high tide. So what happens, for those of you watching, the, the sidewalk or whatever you call the ramp that comes down, there's a gap between that and the rocks that people have been stepping on. So at high tide, you can't see that and it becomes a very dangerous situation. There's a photograph here where you kind of fall down and there's a rock that's pinning your leg there and the tide can push you around and cause damage. And they tried to fix it by moving the rocks. And as we all know, the ocean um, keeps pushing it back to where it wants to. So we tried it a couple times. This is where it is. We've posted lifeguards there around the clock um, and, and we still have injuries there. So it's just been deemed an unsafe situation and that has to be closed not indefinitely but for the rest of the summer and i know dpw will be working on how to get another entrance into that portion of the beach that will be um, safer anything to add no nope. great so it's unfortunate but it is uh the right thing to do anything else great so let's move on to other business number 14. no Nothing tonight, Tony. Nothing tonight. John? Just three things. One is I just wanted to commend the um, parks, I guess you could say the Department of Public Works, and in particular the uh, grounds. Uh, they're doing a great job, you know, taking care of the fields, uh, both the baseball fields, the, um, the commons, and, um, you know, just getting out and taking care of it. I think I want to commend them. They don't get too much acknowledgement, but they should, because when you drive around, they look, the town's property looks really nice. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is, you know, I am amazed um, at the recreation department. Uh, my kids are in it, and <laughs> I'm like, that place is hopping over at the uh, high school. And I have to say the recreation commission and the recreation department are doing a phenomenal job with all the kids and the potential securities and the problems that could go on uh, between our beaches and between the events and between the um, boating and between everything else. It's, it's phenomenal uh, what this town has to offer, and I, I commend them for that it. For years. You know, um, I, I was just amazed driving away saying, look at all these cars, the kids, the parents. It's, it's, I don't know too many communities that have, to, have that to offer, and we do, and we are so fortunate. So kudos to them. Uh, the last thing is Heritage Days. You know, don't forget this Friday is uh, Luminaire, so uh, go on out to the harbor, go out to the uh, coastline. It should be very pretty. If you're fortunate enough to have a boat, then you should take it out and take a look at it. It's, it's a great event. Heritage Days is, is great for the town. It's Heritage. Uh, downtown Front Street, they're going to be not only just music and the vendors, but there are also other events uh, with respect to boating and all around the town. So pick up the flyers and uh, go out there and enjoy it. And that's it. Great. Uh, thanks, John. A um, couple other quick things to add. Um, as we were commending DPW, also like to commend the lifeguards. We've gotten a couple emails lately of some, some great jobs that they've done out there. Um, 
Um, so kudos to them, and, and thank you for taking care of our beaches. Um, John touched on baseball. There's a lot of baseball being played. I know your son's playing. I know my kids are playing. And uh, you know, thanks to all the coaches, all the situate teams are doing great. In fact, uh, one of them's playing in the championship game tonight, and uh, one of them played in a tournament out in Pittsfield last week and did well. And um, you know, so if you're looking for some good cheap entertainment, just walk to a ball field. They're all in the playoffs right now, and um, and it's a good good entertainment. And I see Scott sitting out there still. Football's right around the corner as well, so um, that'll be happening quickly. And then just to reiterate the Heritage Days. Um, you know, John is doing a lot with this with the chamber, and um, the opening ceremonies are Saturday morning at nine o'clock down by the movie theater, where the whole thing gets kicked off. But as John mentioned, the luminary is really the start of it on Friday night, where there'll be candles along the whole coast of the town, and then um, the historical sites will be open to the public, as well as um, the music down on Front Street and all the vendors and all the uh, um, you know kids kids activities and stuff that are going on there. So. Um, Come out, enjoy it, learn about the heritage of the town, and, and uh, have a good time. Um, Ms. Burbine. Pam Burbine, 10th and Grant Road. Just a reminder, there will be virtually no parking in the harbor. There will be shuttle service from the Greenbush TV station. And we encourage people to use it, please, because the harbor fills up very, very quickly. There will be parking, free parking, at the Greenbush TV station. Great, thank you. So again, reiterate, T Station and Greenbush um, shuttles back and forth to the harbor if parking gets to be an issue, and it always does. Yeah, and don't park on the uh, the boat landing like somebody had done with their Corvette like two, three years ago during low tide because uh, it ended up getting uh, swamped. So be careful where you park. Great. So and the weather's going to be good, and it's going to be a great weekend. Um, correspondences. None. None? Um, right. None. So now we're going to uh, take a second and go to an executive session um, because we're discussing matters that um, would be detrimental to the process if we discuss them here. So thank you all for participating. Good night, Joe. And uh, we will see you next uh, meeting is at the end of August. Good night, folks. Thank you. Joe was in bed a half an hour ago, Tony. No, nah, <laughs> you wouldn't miss this.